Okay, I'm going to work through the problems that were assigned for the assignment tonight. And so let's just get right in. This is number 10. And um, we want to first, in this first step, <clears throat> identify X or Y intercepts if they exist. And it's also important um, to go ahead and do any factoring that we can do while we're in this first step. So the numerator, I notice, is the difference between two perfect squares. It's x squared plus 4, x squared minus 4. And the denominator is also the difference between two squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. And so uh, x-intercepts would come from setting the numerator equal to 0. Well, if you set this first factor, x squared plus 4, equal to 0, and solve for x, hopefully you can see that you're going to get an imaginary number so that means I'm not going to have an x-intercept that comes out of that factor. So no, no need to go any further there. But this other factor, if I solve it, then I'm going to get plus and minus 2. All right, so I'm going to be crossing the x-axis, according to this, at positive 2 and negative 2. As far as uh, y-intercepts, I would plug... 0 in for x and for both x's and if you do you're going to get 16. So that's uh, above where I am of course on this um, this particular graph so no need to change the x's but I'm going to go ahead and just do the y's and uh, I'll just go ahead and do them in twos. Still going to put it pretty far up there but uh, that's okay so I'm going to make my graph too crowded, so y is in twos. All right, so two, four, and so forth. Okay, so um, we now can see our, our uh, y-intercept can be plotted right there. All right, so... The graph is starting to take shape just a little bit. Uh, we know where our intercepts are, and now let's start looking for asymptotes. So let's start with vertical asymptotes. Those are numbers that would make the denominator equal zero. And I've got two. I've got a vertical at x equals negative one and one at x equals positive one. So I'm going to sketch those asymptotes. All right, uh, for horizontals, uh, we have to check, but um, the numerator degree is bigger than the denominator. So we will not have a horizontal. For obliques, um, we didn't have any matching factors that we could cancel, but the degree of the top is not one more than the bottom. It's, to, it's two. So we will not have an oblique asymptote. And that takes care of, uh, we won't have to worry about holes on this particular assignment. We'll, we'll tackle that on part two of our lesson. Okay, so um, I think we are pretty much now ready to uh, do a table of values. And so these two vertical asymptotes are essentially going to break our graph up into three different parts. And we just have to know uh, where those parts exist. So um, on the left side, so let's focus on the left, to the left of this vertical asymptote x equals negative 1. I know I'm going to be crossing through this x-intercept, but I don't really know for sure until I do some points whether it's uh, coming in this direction or from the opposite direction. I know eventually once we cross through this we're going to be approaching this vertical asymptote uh, forever. So uh, let's get an idea by inputting uh, negative 3. Okay, so negative 1 is off limits. Negative 2, I already know. So let's do negative 3. 
And when you're doing these inputs, uh, you can plug in to either one. Uh, I think in this case, the red is easier to use because we have multiple X's to have to replace in the blue factoring, but uh, you do uh, whatever you like to do. Doesn't really matter. So let's, um, let's plug into our calculator and uh, see what we get as an output for negative three. All right, so my calculator set up here, negative three raised to the fourth power. Make sure you put, of course, negative three in parentheses, minus 16. And that's going to be divided by eight. And I got 8.125 as an output. All right, so negative three, and remember we're in uh, twos, so two, four, six, eight, and then just a little bit above that. And so we can get a picture now that as we choose more values approaching X approaching negative infinity, we're just going to continue to go in this direction. So we're pretty good doing a rough sketch through those two points. I'm going to connect the red table of values point with my blue x-intercept. See if I can connect those. And then uh, after, after we pass through this point, we're just going to approach this vertical asymptote forever. So that's a curve that will, as far as the uh, definition of the curve, we're, we won't get too exact, but we should be showing that as we go to the left with our inputs, it should be uh, curving in that direction. All right, so that takes care of the left side of that vertical asymptote. And now let's uh, do in between. Well, one thing is for sure, we are never crossing the x-axis other than these two blue dots. So in here, I'm going to be approaching these two vertical asymptotes forever once I go through this y-intercept. Okay, so if you think about it, I'm going to do something, and I'll erase it, but I just want to show you. It doesn't make sense that we would go through this way because this would imply that eventually I'm going to cross the x-axis, which we know is not possible. So the only other option, we don't really have to do any inputs here. This is going to be like a parabola that's contained within these two vertical asymptotes. And so it's going to go through and up forever. And then up a little bit. All right, and then it's just a matter of finding out what happens over here. You'll find that a lot of times with these graphs that are broken up into three parts, um, usually uh, these two parts on either side, the left side extreme and the right side, they'll usually mirror each other uh, in our case. So um, we have symmetry, of course, right down the middle, the y-axis uh, creates symmetry. And so we can pretty much count on the fact that if I input uh, positive 3, I'm going to get 8.25, 8.125 as well. All right, because that makes sense if we raise either one of those to the fourth power and to the second power, it just makes them positive. So uh, let's see, 3, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then just a little higher. And so we just have a mirrored image. With that left piece, something like that. Missed that point, but I think, I think you get it. All right, and so that takes care of problem number 10. All right, let's move on to number 11. And uh, it's just going to be the same process repeated over and over again. And uh, the more you do these, the, the easier it's going to get. Okay, so uh, once again, we'll look for any X or Y intercepts. Um, let's just go ahead and get any factoring done that is possible to be done. 
Uh, the numerator, uh, this goes back uh, several lessons. This represents, uh, I don't know if you recognize it, this is the sum of two cubes. And so we have a factoring method that looks like this. You do the cube roots of both x cubed and 64. And then you make a trinomial factor out of those, x squared minus 4x plus 16. And then we can factor out this denominator using a GCF of 4. Actually, 8. Sorry, we can do 8 pulled out. All right, so uh, let's take a look now. The x-intercept would be setting this numerator equal to zero. Well, this uh, trinomial, quadratic trinomial, is going to give us an imaginary, if you, if you did try to solve it with the quadratic formula, um, I'll save a little bit of time, but you're going to get an imaginary result, which means I'm not going to get an x-intercept out of this. But obviously, we can get one out of this, so we're going to have an x-intercept of negative 4. All right, so I know my graph is going to cross through the x-axis there. And then uh, for y-intercepts, we just set uh, replace x with 0 in both cases. And we get 64 over negative 24. So if you did that in your calculator, you should get, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> negative 2.67. So again, for y-intercepts, just replace x with 0, and I'm left with, left with 64 over negative 24. So I've got a y-intercept of negative 2.67, negative 2 and 2 thirds. All right. <coughs> Now let's see about asymptotes. Um, I'm going to take this denominator factor that contains x and vertical asymptotes are numbers that we could plug in for x to make the denominator equal 0. So if we solve for x here, we're going to have x equals 3 halves or 1 and 1 half. So I'm going to sketch a vertical line at 1 and 1 half. Very good. All right. And uh, let's see, that's our vertical asymptote. Checking for horizontal asymptotes and oblique asymptotes. We can't have a horizontal because the numerator degree is bigger. And kind of like the last one problem that we did, uh, there's not an oblique because the top degree is not one more than the bottom. It's actually two. And again, don't worry about holes. On this lesson, I've pulled out the problems that um, that have holes in them. All right, so uh, let's see what we got. Um, really, in this case, as I look on this left side, I know I'm not going to cross the x-axis anywhere but right here. And so we can just go ahead and put these two points together. I know that once I cross the, through those two points, I will be approaching this vertical asymptote as y approaches negative infinity. So that's uh, the left side of that vertical asymptote. And so uh, let's take a look at the right side. And so we'll do a table of values over here. All right, so let's see uh, about x equals 2. So if we put 2 in for x, Let's see if we can do some mental math here. 2 cubed is 8. 8 plus 64 is 72. And this is 32 minus 24, which is 8. So the point 2, 9 is on the graph. And uh, let's go ahead and do 3. Let's 
probably going to be way up here, um, way up, uh, pretty steep. But we'll see what we get if we plug in three for X. Ninety-one divided by twenty-four. That's three point eight. All right. So yeah, I was actually it's going to go down from there. So let's see. I plug in three, and I got almost four. That's right there. All right. Let's just continue on. Put in four. What do we get for four? So that's 128 on the top. I'm just putting four in for X, so 64 plus 64, 128 divided by 64 minus 24, and 40. And that's 3.2. So we'll go down just a little bit further. And then uh, let's try five. So 125 plus 64. One eighty nine divided by fifty six, that's three point three eight. Okay, so at this point, when I get to five, now I'm starting to go back up. I'm a little bit higher, so I know I've reached the bottom of this curve. As you can see, I'm not going to go down anymore once I once I continue to put numbers in for X. I'm just going to continue to get bigger going this way. So we've basically reached the bottom of this curve. And so now I'm going to connect these two dots. And I'm going to connect this dot that we came up with earlier. And we'll just trace the vertical asymptote going up forever. And then this is just going to continue to increase as the numbers and you could check this out yourself. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you wanted to go with six, uh, you would see that it's just going to continue to give you a larger value for Y as these X's increase. And so uh, I think we've got it. Uh, that time, like I said in class, it really just depends on the problem and how comfortable you are. Um, I would not think you would ever have to go beyond you know, six or seven inputs, but sometimes you can sketch it out without doing any. So that's our answer for number 11. Okay, uh, this is uh, number 14. So we're back to our routine. Uh, let's see if we have any uh, X or Y intercepts. Uh, we don't have any x-intercepts because uh, the numerator is a constant and so obviously uh, we can never make that become zero um, and y-intercepts would mean we let the x's become zero so let's see if we let both of those x's become zero we end up with negative five-fourths All right, so I'm going to mark uh, negative one and one fourth on the y-axis. And uh, we've already mentioned we will not be crossing the x-axis at all. Okay, let's see if we have any uh, vertical asymptotes. So let's uh, take a look at our denominator. We will have two vertical asymptotes. We'll have one at x equals one and then we'll have another one at x equals negative four. So 
So I'm going to sketch those. All right, so with two vertical asymptotes, we know that our graph will be in uh, three different pieces or sections. All right, let's take a look at uh, any horizontal asymptotes. Uh, looks like we will have a horizontal asymptote. Um, a constant has a degree zero, and the degree of the denominator is two. If you multiply those two x squared, you get x squared. So since the denominator degree is bigger, then the numerator that always creates the horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, or in other words, the x-axis. Okay, so as we look at where we are not able to graph, um, so far we have a graph that's going to be in three different pieces. Um, it's good to know whether or not this horizontal asymptote can be crossed. So the way we do that, we looked at this in class with oblique asymptotes. Uh, let's do the same thing with horizontal asymptotes. So we got y equals zero. So to know whether or not this horizontal asymptote will be crossed with our graph, we'll take zero you always take the mx plus b part of either your horizontal asymptote or your oblique asymptote and let your function equal that. So in this case, I'm going to do 0 equals x minus 1 times x plus 4. Well, when I multiply by this denominator on both sides, I get 0 equals 5, which obviously isn't true. So that tells me that's good information that tells me that I will not be crossing over this horizontal asymptote. I will not have an oblique asymptote because the denominator degree is greater, so don't have to worry about that. So we um, pretty much have it mapped out where we will not be able to graph the barriers, the the lines that create discontinuity. So now let's see, the question becomes, will my graph exist in this area or this area? Because we already proved that we will not cross over this horizontal asymptote. So it's got to be one or the other. And so just one input really will tell us. So let's just pick the first number we come to, to the left of that vertical line, so that would be negative 5. All right, so if we input negative 5, let's show what that looks like. And then simplify, so that's negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So we get positive 5 6. All right, so that's really all I need to know. Input negative 5 gives me just a little bit below positive 1. And so because I'll never go below this horizontal, and I will never cross a vertical asymptote, it's never possible. Um, it's a little crooked, but I think it'll work. There's the graph. We'll call that part one. Well, part two, um, typically we would say it has to be either up here or down here. Well, we already know it's going to be below because that's where the y-intercept is. So we'll just put some inputs in to give us a little definition. Um, so like, for example, uh, negative three. Let's, let's put negative three in for x. So what we get. All right, so five over this would be negative four times positive one. So that's negative one and one fourth. So for negative three, 
input negative three, a little bit below one, which is on the same horizontal line as our y intercept. So let's just go ahead. We can we can go ahead and sketch out our graph from here. Uh, we know that we will be following this vertical asymptote forever. It's a rough sketch, so we know we will not be crossing above that horizontal asymptote, passing back down through. And so we're going to have a per, basically a parabola that opens upside down in that middle section. And then typically uh, this section will mirror this one. So uh, we'll just go ahead and find out exactly where if I input 2. That's the next available x to the right of that vertical asymptote. So you'll see that we get 560 in. Two, five, six, and we can go ahead and draw this curve. And we are done. That's uh, the answer for number 14. Okay, now we're on to number 15. So, same routine. Let's look for x intercepts. Well, we will not have an x intercept because we cannot make this numerator equal to zero. Our y-intercept would come from substituting 0 in for x. So we'll just take a look at that. Or over 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So we're going to have a y-intercept at positive 1. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. It's the number that would make the denominator equal 0. We will have a horizontal asymptote again at y equals 0 because the denominator degree, which is 2, is bigger than the numerator degree, which is zero. All right, and uh, we don't have to worry about obliques, even though we should always look. Uh, the numerator degree is not bigger by one over the denominator. So uh, this one's going to be pretty simple, especially the left side. Well, let's just make sure this is the way that you can always make sure that you will never cross a horizontal asymptote or when it happens an oblique asymptote. So I'm going to take the mx plus b part of the horizontal asymptote, which is zero, and just let that equal this function. You can probably tell very much like what we ran into before. If you multiply both sides by the denominator, you get an untrue statement. So that's just indication, that's, that's proof to you, assurance that you will not cross over the horizontal asymptote with your graph. So for that reason, uh, when I cross through this y-intercept, I'm going to follow this horizontal asymptote as x approaches negative infinity. And then I'm going to follow this vertical as y approaches infinity. And then I'm just going to go ahead and find out, you know, give me a point to draw through. I don't like just random graphs. We don't have to get too particular, but um, let's provide a little bit of definition to this. So uh, let's do input 3. And that's pretty easy math. So if we input 3 into the function, we get output of 4. And using the same logic that we used before, um, we know we're not going to cross over this horizontal asymptote. We never cross over vertical asymptotes. 
So we can do sketch and grab like this. All right, that's your answer for number 15. All right, on to number 16. Um, let's look for x-intercepts. Set the numerator equal to 0. And we have an x-intercept of 3. y-intercepts, we replace x with 0. And we have a y-intercept of negative 3. Can't do any factoring. Uh, that's always something we look for, but no, that's not possible in this problem. So now let's identify, uh, we'll start with vertical asymptotes. Uh, we have a vertical at x equals negative 1. All right. Um, this is the first time we've run into this situation of a horizontal asymptote where the degrees are the same. We talked about this in your notes. When the degrees are the same, take those lead coefficients, in this case they're both 1, and just make a fraction. So y equals 1 divided by 1, which is 1. So our horizontal asymptote will be the line y equals 1. And then again, um, it's always good to check to see if you will cross over the horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to let 1, which was the, think of that as the mx plus b part, I'm going to let that equal the function, multiply by x plus 1 on both sides. And we can tell already that um, it's not going to give us a true statement. We're not going to get a real number answer. So uh, we can have assurance that we will not cross over this horizontal asymptote. All right. And then um, always check for obliques, but uh, we will not have an oblique because the numerator degree is not one more. Okay. Now, um, we can pretty much do the right side. We know we're not crossing this horizontal asymptote, and we never cross vertical asymptotes, so we know what the right side looks like, just connecting those two points. So let's do something um, over here on the left. So let's do a little table, and really one number should do it. Let's input negative 2. So negative 2 minus 3 divided by negative 2 plus 1, negative 5 over negative 1. So if I input negative 2, I get an output of 5. And that's really all I need because going through that point, approaching this vertical and approaching this horizontal should give us our graph. We are done with number 16. All right, number 17. Uh, we do not have an x-intercept. y-intercept if we put a 0 in for x. And the 1 16th. So we're going to be crossing the y-axis, I'm going to just estimate just above the origin. All right, um, couldn't do any factoring, so let's move on to step two. Um, vertical asymptote, we will have a vertical at x equals negative four. Okay, so we do have a horizontal asymptote. The degree of the denominator is 2. The degree of the numerator is 0. So our horizontal asymptote will be 
y equals zero, which is again the x-axis. Um, I won't go through that work again, but if you want to know for sure if your horizontal asymptote will be crossed over by the graph, then you would just set zero equals the function and uh, you will get uh, you will not get a real number answer you'll get a false statement so we will not be crossing over our horizontal asymptote and uh, again we do not have an oblique asymptote all right um, so we can the right side is pretty much if we just use that y intercept knowing that it's, it's good knowledge to know that we are never going to cross over the horizontal and verticals never cross. Don't have to worry about that. So let's just do an input to see what it's going to look like on the left side of that vertical. So just next, next closest number to the left would be negative 5. All right, and so that looks like uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So if we input negative 5, we get an output of positive 1. And so the left side of that vertical asymptote is going to do something like this. It really should approach as you head toward y is headed toward positive infinity. It's more like that. All right, and uh, that's the answer for 17.